Right, okay. So, hello everyone, this is Tomo here, and this is your Rebel Big O Week 4 Recap. Today I'm being joined by Liam Cool Coulston, um, Crusader, and Reese. Um, so, so, just to start everything off, as usual, we're going to start with Cool taking us on our journey around the grounds. Alright, thanks Tomo. So, in Week 4, starting with Division 3, uh, Holly Moore beat Iriductor Billy. Uh, that might have been a concede uh, win. I haven't seen that yet, but we know that Iriductor Billy is not playing any more games due to two unexplained concedes. So, uh, playing them in future rounds will result in a 2 0 concede victory. Um, the Wampfners beat the Kanama Dragons. Now, the Kanama Dragons also will not be continuing. Uh, in the big O, Walkathon made a post about that as well. Um, I believe it was the Kanama Dragons because of personal issues. So hopefully we can see him around another time. Um, so the Wampfners beat them 3-1. The old Hobart Honey Badgers lost to the Cullen Skinks 1-2. Uh, as usual, Tomo's game was recorded. So Scabby Eye versus Echoes of Uthway. Tomo ended up winning 1-0. It was actually 1-1. One, uh, one. Of... Oh... Sorry. <laughs> I've already stuffed up today. <laughs> Moving on from that stuff up. Let's hope I've got everything else right. Uh, Crushavania beat the SI Earthshakers 2-0, uh, so they are still undefeated. Um, the Phallus Cowboys lost to the Walk Machine 3-1-0. So moving on to the ladder, we have um, Crushavania's on top. Closely followed by Echoes of Uthway, but Crushvania is yet to play its fifth game so far, so we'll see how they go there. Um, only one game has been, no, two games have been played in week five so far, so it's pretty even in here. Everyone's still in it. Uh, I believe it's 11 rounds, so everyone still has a chance to play off if they start to win out the rest of the matches. Might just have to run the table. So going into Division Two, uh, we can see that straight out enough will beat the Garon Cold Ones two to one. Uh, the Flying Rainbow Ponies lost to the Rat Lovers two to three. Fun and Interactive beat Triple Extra Cheese Toppin three to zero. A very impressive score, I might add, for a dwarf team. Uh, Tardis beat the Razor Leafs two to zero. Uh, West Seas Wolves beat the Talon Marauders one all. And Tomo, were there any games in Div Two we casted? I don't think there was last week. Um, I don't think I saw any that week. At least not off the top of my head. Yeah. So we'll look at you guys next week, Div 2, uh, maybe. Uh, moving on to the ladder, we have TARDIS, of course. Still haven't lost, so they're doing really well. Um, but other than that, we got three teams on three wins. So they chase and TARDIS down. I believe it's only one playoff spot in here. And since it's a small 10-man division, it's only nine rounds. So it's going to be, you know, there's not many games to go, only four. So you really got to start turning the table now. You could say that some of the bottom teams, like poor Crusader, might be out. So, but we'll see how they go. Um, looking at Division 1 now. Uh, we had the Cold Coat Cutthroats were on the buy this week, which meant they could get a bit more money to come back and rebuild that team because it was dismantled a bit last season. Um, the Bad Phoenix versus the Astro Orcs. The Astro Orcs actually lost here, uh, which is surprising for Walkathon. I, I believe that was Bad Phoenix's first win, so good job to the coach there. Um, Capital Rats beat New World Order, so they continue to do well with the Capital Rats. Uh, it's the Speedsters went down to the white line, 3-1. to one. Dwarven around, they also are not going to be participating in the rest of the season. Uh, the coach is moving, but he hasn't shown up or given us another message. So for now, he's just a buy round at the moment. Um, Duck, Confederacy versus, Duck Confederacy versus Reese's Ravens was a good game. I remember casting that one. Uh, Reese ended up grinding that out 1-0. And there we saw the birth of a new star, Arthur and Dragon, which we will see more about later. And then Shadow Hill Cowboys beat Bash Incorporated 2-1. to one. 
So looking at the ladder for here, we can see that on top is actually uh, Reese's Ravens, but that was before Morka's game, which just occurred. Um, we, we'll see about that next week. Uh, but go check that out if you want to see a really good game between White Line and the Cold Coast Cutthroats. So in in this division, um, we've actually seen some teams get off the mark with some wins now, which is good to see Bad Phoenix winning. Um, and I believe they're not on here currently, but oh, I can't remember. There might be one team who still hasn't won, so let's hope for them. Um, but yeah, looking at it, it looks like it's a bit surprising because Walkthon is a good coach and he started a little slowly this season. But yeah, it, the front runners really are the Shadow Hill Cowboys, White Line, and Reese's Ravens at the moment in Division 1. So. That is all for Around the Grounds. Okay. Thanks very much, Cool. Um, you're actually going to be jumping out just now, aren't you? But... Yeah. So I'll be seeing everyone next week, as I am busy this week. So see you later, all. Awesome. Thanks very much. Okay, so now it's time for our weekly recap. We're just going to, as usual, each of us is going to select one team from each division, kind of talk about it, as well as their game and how they're looking to be stacking up in the league. So we'll start with Division 3. Um, Crusader, I believe you haven't actually been on our recap thing before. Is that right? Yeah? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's correct. Yeah. Okay, we'll give you a fresh shot at the teams this week then. So... Choose your team in Div uh, 3. Who is there a team we haven't looked at? I kind of want to look at the Chaos team. Um, we'll look at Holly Ma, I guess. Unless we've seen them every other week. I can't remember. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I might have done them last week, but it's fine. Just go for it. Yeah, we'll have we've, done, Holly we've done all the teams once now, so... Oh, okay, cool. Where are we? So, Tomo was correct. Uh, sorry, Cool was correct. Um, their game against uh, Irreductibility was indeed a concede. But um, I just wanted to have a look at the team and see how they were shaping up. But uh, it looks like they got a Chaos Warrior who is also out for his next game with a fractured arm. Yeah, I can claim Done. responsibility for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's always good. Uh, we've got quite a bit of SPP spread around, but um, not a whole lot of progression on the Warriors where you'd like to see it. Don't know what else there is to say about them, really. Yeah. I mean, they've, they've got two levels on the Warriors. after They've only played five games, so it's not too bad, really. Uh, they do they do level pretty slowly. I think he's been a little bit unlucky oh, I miss, as I well. Miss the Dodge Warrior. <laughs> yeah, I think he's been a little bit unlucky as well with some of his games, you know, especially with um, the concede from irreducibility. Because you know, when you start getting these concedes, when you're playing, kind of like the way that you play can sometimes dictate which models get SPP. Whereas mm. when people start conceding, you know, you have two MVPs, which fair play, you're getting two MVPs, but that's completely random. And also the six SPP you're getting from the try scores starts being completely random. Whereas when you're playing, you can maybe have a little bit more of a choice in that. Yeah, definitely. yeah I mean, like, and the game against Dr. Billy did actually start. Like there was some, some of it was played. Yeah, that coach has got a bit there. of a history of um, conceding when things go bad. It's um, twice he's done it now, which is why he's been kicked out of the league. Yeah, it's unfortunate that it happens. Um, yeah, like conceding, man, it, it's rough, isn't it? Yeah, especially in a small league like this when you're only playing one game a week. Exactly right, like... You're removing your opponent's ability to claim any SPP at all. It's, uh, uh, well, but, um, yeah, hopefully Zins can, uh, you know, get some more games under his belt and get some more progression. Um, Chaos is one of those teams that sort of 
they, they're never going to sort of take off spectacularly quickly, but if they can start getting some levels in there, they become a threat in future seasons. Yeah, I think he's been, you know, quite unlucky with his draws as well. Like, I mean, spoilers for next week, but I actually played him in week five, and I think, you know, like, my team especially is quite a bad matchup for him because I've got block almost everywhere now. So, you know, there's mm. not, like, anywhere that he can get any real safe blocks off. If you have a look at some of the games he's got coming up, He's got Krushavania next week, so that's going to be another really tough time for him. With them, of course, Krushavania at the top, and then after that, he's playing against the Kanima Dragons, which will be another kind of admin call. So you know, it looks like it's going to be a difficult season for him, but hopefully, with these, you know, like the admin call wins, hopefully, he'll start getting you know a whole spree of level ups and suddenly become a lot better. Hmm. Anyway, let's move on. Um, Reese, it's your pick next out of the teams. Uh, I guess we'll take a look at the Wumpthers then. Um, uh, so that's Daz Ivy. Um, or oh, that's Ivy. I'm not sure how to pronounce that exactly, but uh, that's his uh, his um, Skaven team, which is developing quite nicely. Um, He's got block on one of his gutter runners. He's got plus strength on another one and block on another one. And then he's got a plus strength thrower, which is which is nice because he can collect the ball and be pretty safe until he uh, can get it off to one of the gutter runners. And he can be a bit more aggressive with him on a, offense as well. Um, he's got he's break tackle got on the, the rat ogre. Yeah, he's just going to say that. <laughs> yeah, which is great because... Um, the big, the big thing with the Rat Ogre is that you always want to be throwing blocks or blitzes with him, um, and people can just kind of pin him down because he's only AG2. But with that, he can, you know, if he's in the right spot, he can blitz a ball carrier or whatever. He's got a lot of strength on him. Yeah, it looks like the team here is um, progressing nicely. Yeah, the only thing I'd really like to see is a bit more development on the Storm Vermin. Probably needs at least one of them to get Mighty Blow. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think it's really nice as well that he's actually managed to pick up his two extra gutter runners now. I know at the start of the season, yeah. like he chose to run with um, two throws, two storm vermin, and two gutters. Mm. So and I'd probably put like uh, the uh, tabletop box setup. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's the standard red ogre setup, uh, yeah. other than the extra thrower. But um, I. Also, like to see him put wrestle on the plus strength player, make him a, a cave diving fellow, the plus strength uh, gutter runner that is. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that makes oh, yeah, it looks like he's looking to pick up his third reroll too in his next match. The winnings after that should get him there. Yep. Um, who is he playing against last week? Uh, he played. Oh, he had the Kamina Dragons. But it looks like that one was actually played, so that was before he had to drop out. It was a concede, though. Um, uh, yeah, it was. Hmm. Uh, it must have been partway through the game. Yeah, kind of looks like that. Because he must have been at least already on three touchdowns, because uh, it only... Oh. Oh no, one one. No, because you. Yeah, it would be one one because it instantly give you two touchdowns for the concede. It's up to two, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a whole um, slew of. He's XP. doing pretty well overall. SPP rather. If you have a look at that game, he got what five seven three three three. That's pretty solid. So he must have had at least an injury and a touchdown before it ended. Yep. Uh, was two KOs, one injury inflicted. Yeah, he's doing pretty well. He's two two zero. So he's uh, he did have one uh bye week there, but other than that, he's he's doing pretty well overall. Cool, awesome. Um, anything else on the Skaven team? Or are we gonna? Keep no, I moving? think we can move on to your choice. Awesome. Okay, so my choice is actually going to be 
I'm just going to save my own curiosity and I'll choose Walk Machine 3 because I don't think I've looked at them in a while, which is of course coached by um, Lyscaris with the motto Grind, Drive, Repeat. Um, <laughs> it's an Orc team that is currently at two wins, one draw, one loss. Um, the reason I'm looking at them is because I know they're playing Crushavania this week and I'm really cheering for them um, because... We really need people to start taking points away from Crushavania if the rest of us are going to be able to catch up and have a chance to compete for this playoff spot. But um, sure. interestingly enough, he's gone for the Thror build with the Orcs, which it seems to be standard in Rebel. Like I don't see as many Throwers in Champion in Champ Ladder as I do in Rebel, but you know here they're just all over the place. So he has a block Thror. He ha also has the Troll. And apart from that, it's just kind of standard with the four blitzers, four black ox, one lineman. With the uh, only two level ups being the block on the thrower and the mighty blow on the blitzer. So, you know, everything about this team, you know, it, it seems kind of standard. He has the two rerolls, has an apothecary. Um, after four games, there, yeah, this is alright. I think it's like a good foundation base to stand on as well. Plus, if you look, like, there's a Blitzer on that's 5 out of 6 SPP, you can imagine he's going to level up soon. The same with that Black Arc. And if his MVPs go in the right places, you know, he could end up having, you know, a lot of level ups quite quickly. Which is good. That's right. I think he'd really like to get some MVPs on those Black Orcs. Because uh, he's got three of them that will level up with a single MVP. Hmm. We have a look at their history, their games. Um, last week we played the Phallus Cowboys and won one nil, where his MVP went to his line arc. So that's a bit of a shame. Um, he broke armor eight times in that game, and I think he inflicted three cards. At least. Are you sure he's playing Crushavania next week? He says he's already played him. Oh, has he already played Crushavania? Does that he game happen? From the looks of it. Yeah, that's what I see here. Which one? Oh, I must be wrong, man. Uh, where's the schedule? Yeah, where is the schedule? Yeah, he's playing uh, uh, the old Hobart oh, Honey Badgers next week. Yeah, he's got Scabby Eye this week. So week five is Scabby Eye. Yeah. Okay, well, that's still quite interesting. That's must have been why I noticed them then, because, you know, I played Scabby Eye last week. So that's probably why I ended up picking them out. But, like, you know, between, if I look at, like, you know, I compare these two Orc teams then, if I compare, like, Warc Machine with Scabby Eye, you know, I think that, um, Warc Machine's probably gonna take it. If I remember right, Scabby Eye had the armor busted, not the, they had the, um, niggled thrower. Wait. Yeah, just looking at them now. Yeah, you know, that's going to be a liability because, you know, I always say that, you know, I don't like throwers in Orc teams because they've got the AV8 and it's kind of like a weak chink in the Armor 9 armor. But I guess Scabby Eye is a little bit more developed. They've got like an extra reroll on them. They've got a block Black Orc and they've got a Mighty Blow Blitzer as well. So I think it'll yeah, be a but no close... troll. Oh, that's right. No troll. So I do think it'll be a close game. But... I don't know. I kind of hope that Walk Machine kind of take it, if I'm honest. Yeah, just looking at the two teams, it looks like it will be one of those sort of knockdown, drag out sort of fights that you see every now and then. Yeah, I think um, that motto from uh, from Walk Machine is going to be pretty prophetic. Grind, drive, repeat for that game. <laughs> Okay, so if we have a look at the Division 3 leaderboard, um, as Cool kind of pointed out earlier, um, Crushavania are still leading the way. Um, who do they actually have then? Alright, they have the Wumpfners. I just have a quick look at them just for... Oh, that's okay, Days Heavy's team. So we're cheering for Days Heavy this week to take some points off of um, Crushavania. Um, so yeah, I could see that game going every, either way, really. Well, let's see what is happening, see if I can get a cast on that or something. That'd be quite good. Um, aside from that, there's a whole slew of teams that, you know, if they win their games this week, can start putting pressure on. I mean, there's, what, four teams on two wins at the minute? Um, I guess the Phallus Cowboys have already played their Week 5 game. But, 
you know, there's, you know, Walk Machine, the Wumpfners, and the Cullen Skinks that, if they win their game this week, are going to go up to three wins, which is one point behind Crushavania. So, yeah, I think all of us in this kind of, like, top half of this league are going to be cheering for um, Days Heavy to hopefully take some points off of Crushavania. You guys got anything you want to point out about that. this, or...? Yeah, it looks like a pretty close league, uh, other than Crashovania, but who knows? We're still pretty early. How many weeks was this one? It was on the 11 week uh, division? Yes. Yeah, plenty of time there for, you know, the top half to sort of. If Crashovania takes a couple of key losses, plenty of time for the top half to sort of snipe him at the end. Ah. Oh. I'm biased in this, of course, but here's hoping. You know. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to Division 2 then. Um, again, Crusader, it's your division I imagine you know pretty well. Um, you can have your um, pick of the teams. I will give my pick of the teams uh, to Reese. I think I may have to just restart my Blood Bowl client. This right. is locked up on me. All right, okay, Reese, you can go first then. Uh, all right. Um, give me one second. I'm still looking at the teams. Uh, so I guess we'll take a look at straight out and Nuffle, um, because they've been doing reasonably well, uh, and I always like a good human team. They're not quite as as uh as good as Brits, but they're you know nice to see out there doing well. Okay. So he's seven one and one, which is pretty solid. Uh. That's uh, obviously including his spin matches. But um, he's got some well-developed blitzes there. He's got two with guard, two with mighty blow. One of those has dodge and one has tackle. So he'll be um, he'll be a rough opponent for anybody, really. He'll, he's going to be able to put a lot of pressure on them um, unless they're, you know, as, as, as long as they can't mu out-muscle him, which is always the issue for uh, the humans. He's um, got four guard now. And his ogre has blocks, so that's going to be a rough line for anybody really to take come up against on the uh, when he's on the uh, offense. I like the strong arm, accurate thrower. Uh, that makes for a very effective thrower for a human team, even at agility three. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's a pretty solid team really overall. Guard catcher, which is okay. Uh, do you have an opinion on the like the fact he's choosing to run two throws instead of just the one or um well i mean from the looks of it the way he's developed them at least i mean it's hard to say what his thoughts the, were when he first started but the way he's developed them that's fine one of them's a thrower and one of them's kind of got block and it's not it's not a huge difference in price between a lineman and a thrower it's only 20k i mean it's it makes things a bit rush, rougher when you first start out um but in the in the long run, that's only one skill, and you're getting two out of it. Right. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, on the human team, I don't really have any any issue with multiple throwers. Sure hands is great. Yeah, I think a big bonus point of this team is actually you know the ogre rolling block on his first level up is yeah, completely mm. huge. You know, when you're rolling blocks, the like, guy when you have block compared to not having block, you know, it just it makes it so less scary. Like you can almost rely on this a little bit. Like I still think oh, rolling, right. you know, like first block, like first action, big guy blocks per turn. You know, it's still it's not something you particularly want to do, but you know, at least with block, you know, you can kind of rely on it. It also makes them much harder to get out of a scrum. Like, with block, he's much harder to get away, and so that way his guard is still there, causing problems for you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm up against uh, straight, off, straight out of Nuffle next week. Yep. <laughs> That'll be good. All right, okay, and of course, he played against um, Fun and Interactive, which I've heard uh... are a very fun team to play. Oh, is that week five? I think That's that was this five. week. 
Yeah, he played against the uh, Garond Cold ones. All right, okay. We can have a look at that game then. Quickly, at least some of the stats from it. Um, so kick off Lamar actually got MVP for that game and his level up, which would have been nice for him. Um, is there anything else interesting about this game? Or uh, I remember that Lithium streamed it, uh, and... <sighs> A lot of throws. Really? There was three passes in yeah. that game. <laughs> three successful passes. Um, try, I remember sitting there watching it. Uh, don't recall there being anything overly exciting, if you know what I mean. It looks like, like the cold ones just, just got out muscled. Uh, yeah. Considerably more blocks and injuries for the uh, for straight out of Nuffle. Yeah, they tried to keep off the. Uh, yeah, you know, they tried to stay out of contact straight out of Nuffle, but um, at some at some point you've got to just get in there and accept that you're going to get hit a bit. Alrighty then. So that looks like we're direct done with straight out of Nuffle, unless you guys yeah. have got anything to add. No, nothing that I've got to add. Um, I'm looking forward to playing them next week. Yay. Okay, so... <laughs> Crusader, <laughs> that's your pick now then, if you're back in game, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm back in. Um, who to pick? I don't want to pick fun and interactive because who likes who likes dwarfs? Uh, let us have a look at. You no, know, we'll actually. I'll go. I'll pick the Garond cold ones. He hasn't rolled his level ups. No, um, he was talking to me about it uh, afterwards. He's like, "Do I do them now, or should I wait till I see what like who I'm playing next?" I was like, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other, really, isn't it? Oh, I just feel that uh, as because metal would say it, I should say it. And I agree. We want to shame these people that don't give us something to talk about. Um, <laughs> do you know what he rolled? Did he tell you at all, or is he? Would he rather keep that secret? Um, I legitimately can't remember if he rolled it or not. Um, okay, so just say it was doubles. What I, would you take? What would I take on a doubles on a blitzer? It gives him strength in passing, doesn't it? Yep. Guard or mighty blow, really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I agree. Mighty blow, um, like, absolutely. It's something you need. You need to get a removal place on a Dark Elf team. That's what I did with my Dark Elves. Like, as soon as I got that doubles, it was, like, straight in a mighty blow. Uh, what about if it's the um, normals? What do you think? Dodge. Yeah. That's not really a question, is it? Like, <laughs> you're an elf, you've got agility four, you take dodge. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at the moment, all he's got is um, the niggled runner who has dodge. So... Oh, that's right. I do remember this game was uh, there was a couple of bloody parts, and I think he, I think he lost a blitzer in this game, relatively early on, like just straight up dead. I mean, he's coming to a rough season. He didn't get to play any spin games before it. So against, and this is a, this is again in the division that has mostly people who have played spin games. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the niggled runner? Would you, you keep that, or would you be looking to replace that? He's already short players, so it's kind of hard to justify getting rid of one of his few players with dodge. Yeah, I mean, like if he could have, if he could have afforded to replace him instantly, maybe. Um, but again, like he's down, he's now down a blitzer as well. So yeah, I'd probably I say think there might be an argument for a blitzer first, right? Yeah. He should be able to get that next game. Yeah, should be able to. Yeah, it's only ten k difference between that and a new a new runner. So, okay, cool. Or if, yeah, I mean, if he rolls really well, he can even consider a witch elf. <laughs> yeah, see, Matt and I, uh, Lithium and I, play in the same uh, tabletop league, um, and we've had many discussions about the witch elves and the merits. And, and you know, attractions and detractions thereof. So, yeah, I think he's looking to replace the Blitzer as soon as he possibly can. 
So. Hey, does he not like witch elves, or? Oh, it's not that there's a general dislike. It's um, the armor seven. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, but like, then the then the topic turns between like witch elves and assassins, and like witch elves always went out every day of the week. So. Yeah. I'd probably take Blitzers ahead of uh, Witch Elves, but I'd definitely take Witch Elves ahead of anything else on the team. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, I just think Assassins are bad. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Like, they are. Yeah. Basically, the only way to get any use out of them is to roll doubles and get multi-block. Yeah, right. Yeah. But yeah, no, I just thought, uh, yeah. It's... Um, Got a couple of things he needs to replace, but uh, otherwise, you know, it's Dark Elves. They sort of do what they do, don't they? If Nuffle lets them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Um, moving on, I guess it's my pick. Last one in Div 2, and I am going to choose... Um, bu- bu- bum. Have a look at TARDIS again because I feel like we need to shame them for um, not rolling their level ups. And I know this game was played a few days ago and he has quite a lot of level ups. You have no excuse, Miraskadu. Um, I feel like I should be putting some bounties on some of your guys for this. But um, anyway, <laughs> he's got um, level ups on the Doctor, which is his Croxigore, and as well as two of his Saurus, um, Missy and Clara Oswald. Um, yeah, and it's not like taking what he's going to take on the Saurus is going to be a huge <laughs> surprise to anybody. Oh, exactly. No, I just expect him to block on both of these. You know, the Crocs are going to yeah, the He's already got a mighty blow. He's already got a tackle. So, yeah. Like, if he rolls doubles on the Crocs, getting a, like, a block on the Crocs are just makes it so, so good. Like, I know like, yeah, we mentioned yeah. earlier, like, block on any big guy is just insanely good. But it's especially good on something like a Crocs are like just turn him with the you know into a big roadblock with his um, prehensile tail and everything. Like you don't even need to yeah. th- roll blocks to make him effective. I mean, he's already basically the best big guy in the game, so just giving him block makes him amazing. Yeah, if you ever look at his just his skinks as well, you know, Captain Jack Harkness, you know, is what block is that jump up the end? Yep, it is indeed. Yep. So that's fairly interesting. Yeah, I think. Uh... I think that would be my choice to uh, to mark for a bri- uh, for a um, bounty if I was going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you know I hate that character as well in Doctor Who, so that's fine. Yeah, I'd, I'd quite happily bounty Captain Jack, but um, you know all the rest of them as well. You know it's just a really well developed team. He has SPP everywhere. You know he's top of the league. You know you can kind of see why with lizards like this. I think it's going to yeah. be interesting as the other teams level up and start getting, you know, the skills that they really want when they get more tackle, when they get, you know, their killer pieces become more developed. If he can, you know, still continue this, like, dominance. I mean, obviously his Saurus and the Crocs all have armor 9, so, you know, they're really kind of, you know, sturdy. You know, they're not going to get injured easily. But, you know, with this more Mighty Blow appears and appears and appears, you know, it does start to get a little bit more scary for him i think yeah fortunately for him he's uh he hasn't front loaded all his um point star player points on the skinks so it's always a big concern isn't it really yeah and he has the saurus with five touchdowns scored which is just offensive no it's five now is it yeah there's uh, this um amy ponds isn't it yeah, yeah. the block yeah. tackle saurus <laughs> yeah <laughs> Disgusting. Uh, yeah, the ball just keeps popping up to it. And he ke- keeps rolling sixes. It's yeah, unreal. But yeah, if we yeah, have a he's look, he's got one touchdown on two other Saurus as well. One ta- one touchdown on Clara and one on Martha. Martha getting block, I think, is quite big. Like obviously, you know, first skill was a uh, mighty blow, just to give a bit of hitting power. But, you know, block just makes it, you know, so much more reliable that I think it's going to be really, really good. 
if I have a look at um, the history now, um, they played the Tunnel Marauders. Was that this week or last week? Pretty sure that was this week because I played them last week. All right. I think. Maybe I'm wrong. No, you are right. Yeah, that looks like it from the history. Yeah. But um, just the one thing I'd like to point out is half of his touchdowns have been uh, by the Soros. So he's, <laughs> he's scored 16, <laughs> and he's eight of them were by Soros. It's an impressive stat, isn't it, really? Yeah, I mean, I can never do it whenever I play Lizards. You know, my Soros always just drop them with those that you have won. Yeah, at least so many games because you know you just can't. You go for the uh, like the handoff to Wasaurus, and then you can't pick the ball up again. But Miroscado doesn't seem to be having that problem. Anyway, so we'll move on. We'll have a look at the leaderboard in Division Two, uh, as Cole mentioned earlier. Um, Titus still running away with it with five wins. Um, straight out of Nuffle second now, four oh one. West Seas Wolves, um, three two zero. Um, I'm surprised. Well, it's, I know it's two draws down, and draws can happen somewhat easily. But you know, like I think West Sea was my pick to actually win this league. So he's kind of up there, but you know, with two teams out in front of him, you know, I'm a little bit surprised not to see him it's, kind of near the top. He's still got, he's still got four weeks to go. Um. If Tardis and Straight Out Arthur, as I said earlier, in, the, in Div 3, if they take a couple of, you know, crucial losses or a couple of draws here and there, um, he's still in with a decent chance to get in there. Of course, this league's yeah. hotting up really quickly as well. Like, you guys have only got, what, nine weeks? Yeah, that's correct. That's, that, that feels like it's going to be really, really intense over the next couple of weeks. Mm. On the plus side, uh, at least the uh, league does give you some spins between the uh, to make up for those lost games after after the league. I think it's kind of irrelevant for my team. Uh, they're looking right. a little too bad for the next season. <laughs> Could would you think about like an early reroll then and try and use like your extra spins on like a new team? Or I don't know if you'd be you able to. Um, no, no. If he wa- uh, if he wants to re-roll this late in the season, he'll have to um he'll have to wait till next season. That's generally yeah. how it works. All right, okay. But you know, such is blood ball. So moving up to the big boys in Division One. Um, we'll give the pick to you again, Crusade. Uh, any of the Div One teams. For oh, any of them, there's a few teams in here that I do like. Um, Reese's team I like. The White Line, which we just saw play, was really good. Um, let us take a look at... Uh, let's have a look at the Bay Area Butchers. Okay. Shine a spotlight on some humans. And, uh, it's look at all that agility. Team. Yeah, I was just gonna say, plenty of um, plenty of progression in this team, along with the movement plus agility blitzer. But uh, yeah, it looks like this looks like the Bay Area Butchers are um, shaping up nicely. Um, Garnet, I suspect, may have been a recent recruit. Yeah, zero yeah. SPP, but... Uh... No, he's played three matches. Yeah, matches oh. three. Although it go. just looks like he hasn't been used much because he's only had two blocks, <laughs> and that's his hole. <laughs> <laughs> is that, if you're a lineman in Blood Bowl, is that a successful career thus far? You've survived three games. You've only had to hit people twice. Yeah. I mean, I guess just you look at the rest of the team and... If you're going to be making any moves, you really want to be making it with anyone other than the lineman with no skill. Yeah, exactly right. Um, Elected to go with guard on the ogre. It's usually the pretty standard pick if you don't roll roll doubles, really. Doubles, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, because he's already preloaded with Mighty Blow on there, so. Yeah, uh, just thought it'd be interesting. I actually haven't seen the Bay Area Butchers play at all, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I, I played him a couple of weeks back. Um, so, three weeks back, I think. He got his, la his first win this week, though, against the Lizardmen team, so that's, uh, that's pretty nice for him. Yeah, be happy with that. Yeah, he's quite a good coach, Starkweather. Like he's the like when I played my spin games, kind of like it was my last spin game, I wanted to kind of, you know, test my team a little bit against, you know, a team that I'd already done this season. And um mm -hmm. his team was nowhere near as developed as this, but um, you know, he managed to, you know, beat off my nearly fresh Dark Elves then. Mm. You know, the only so thing I'd the... consider was man, he should get rid of that niggled blitzer. He's only got one skill. Yeah, it's not too late to get rid of him. Yeah, he has the no, money for 14, it. Well. Yeah, he's sitting on 140,000. What do you think of 14 rerolls? It's a bit bloaty, isn't it? Not such a big deal on a human team. Um, but now that he's got all these agility 4 players, I'm, I'd probably consider dropping it down. I kind of feel like humans have a lot of built-in rerolls into their stuff anyway, like, you know, throwers yeah. and catchers, and then, you know, he's got a little bit of dodge going around as well. Like, I would agree, you know, maybe drop down to three, mm -hmm. unless you're playing, like, a super aggressive play style that you really, you really want those four, but, mm -hmm. you know. And who was he playing? Oh, you said he's got his first win against the Lizards. That was yeah, that's right. Week five, though, wasn't it? Week week four, he got his first win against Dwarven around. All right, okay. Oh, that was a concede. Yes. So Dwarven around was his first win. That was a concede, and then is the Speasters was his first actual win. Okay, cool. That's interesting. Does anyone want to point anything else out about this team, or are we ready to move on? No, I've got nothing else to add to him. I just, um, yeah. yeah. Okay, Reese, you're up. Okay, I think um, I'll take a look at the is the speeders because I'm a big fan of Lizardmen. Uh, they're the other team I play, other than the Brits, commonly. And okay. he's uh, he's developed quite well at this point. He's got block on all his Soros. He's got one with Mighty Blow and Tackle, one with Dodge and Break Tackle, which is just amazing. It's like my favorite combination on a, on a Soros. Just because uh, he's so hard to hold down, because you get the Dodge roll, you can re-roll it, then you get to apply Break Tackle. <laughs> um, he's got, you know, a little bit of guard already, so that's good. So he can put, you know, two, sor two Soros with guard uh, and the Croxagor with guard on the on the the, um, the front line, and that's just going to be just ridiculously hard to get rid of. Yeah, asking to yeah. Move, shift a couple of strength four and a strength five player, all of which are assisting each other. And the uh, the movement nine sure feet skank is also great. What's that skill at the end there? That's sure feet. All right. Okay. Yeah, with the plus movement, it's good because it means he can cover, you know, pretty much the whole field. Well, you know, two thirds of the field pretty reliably. He probably yeah, if he gets sprint next. Yeah, I was just gonna say if you get sprint, uh, you've got to apply a lot of work to lock that guy down. Yeah, he only, at that point he only, also only needs one push for a one turn touchdown. Yeah, with stunty, you know, that's uh hard to prevent. And stunty and sidestep. Yeah, it's a good little combination of skills there. Yeah. The only thing I'd like to see, I guess, from this team, and this is just a personal thing, is um, frenzy on at least one of the Saurus. Because uh, strength four frenzy is great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think so one of those two that haven't updated yet, or the uh, the mighty blow guy. Yeah, I was just going to say, if you were to put it on someone, do you put it on uh, the guy who's only got block, or would you stick it on Mighty Blow? It just depends how you want to use the Mighty Blow player, I suppose. Hmm. 
Okay, awesome. And as we saw, he actually played against the Bay Area Butchers, so uh, week five, so we talked about that game a little bit. Week four, he was against White Line. Who, of course, just had that thriller yeah. against um, Cold Cost Cutthroats earlier on today. Yeah, it doesn't. It looks like. Jeez. Uh, he um, <laughs> actually came he out pretty poorly. <laughs> Yeah, but he, he came out pretty poorly on the bashing game, all things considered, considering the number of armor breaks. He took two injuries and a kill and a death. Yeah, that's pretty mad. Yeah. Yeah, considering he got, you know, more than double the amount of armor breaks on an armor seven team. Yeah, if you look at the amount of SPP that especially White Line got in that game. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if most of his team got something, you know, it's sick. Yeah, that's that's the testament to what the Wood Elves are like, though, isn't it? Like, if they spend if their game plan is to minimize the amount of hits they take and just move around the pitch, they they can do so very easily. Uh, he still but, took um, quite a few hits. It's just yeah, he did. It, it, the the speeders just couldn't injure him. Mm. And like, you look at the ball possession too. Like, the Lizardmen had the ball for sixty two percent of the time, and they went down three one. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure Morka played well because he always does, but mm. just from the stats, it looks like uh, the uh, speeders might have had the dice against them to a degree. Nuffle uh, sort of turned his back on him. Alrighty then. Do we know what died? Or... Uh, I don't think it must have been a skink because he's otherwise it's he wouldn't have developed more. Saurus. Yeah. That sounds like sound reasoning. I, I, I dare say so. <laughs> All right. Tomo, what about your pick? Um, who haven't I picked in a while? Uh, so in week four, Bad Phoenix got their first win against the Astro Orcs. So I think I'm going to choose Bad Phoenix just to have a little talk about them. Um, they're coached by Wreath uh, with the motto only balling here um, <laughs> he's, of course he's got uh, two throwers, the two blitzes all four catches and the rest linemen um, his throwers, you know, he's got plenty of nerves of steel actually which I think is an, quite an interesting choice um, it's a pretty solid choice on high uh, especially since he's already got accurate on both of them yeah I don't see very many, um, you know, like high elf teams actually doing good in Rebel, or at least in the Big O. I think that, you know, uh, was it Walkathon that was famous for having a high elf team before he came over here? Yeah, they take a while to do it to develop, but there's a couple of good ones I think in uh, G Man that are doing quite well. Where do they stack up um, on the elf spectrum? If you know what I mean, like you've got. We'll soon have all four of the elf races in the game. Where, where do you think the high elves? Their advantage, like, they're, they're tough to play, but they're really, really good at high TV. Um, but their advantage is they have the best stat line in the game of all the elves. They're mostly armor eight, and they're players that aren't a movement eight. Yeah. Um, that's why, but they don't start with many skills. Like, they've just got the thrower. Um, and uh, the two blitzes. Sure. And, you know, catch on the catches. Um, so that's why it takes a little while for them to get solid. So as long as they're staying alive and getting stuff done. Yeah. And progressing. Yeah, if, you had to, if you had to give them, I guess, a specialty, it would be the passing game. Because uh, pass, sure th uh, pass uh, and uh, what is it? Safe throw are a really, yep. really good combination. And they start with both those skills, don't they? Well, they only that's right. Start up. Yeah. That, yeah, they start with both of them. So, that, so that's yeah. why they're an amazing thrower. If you can get plus agility on them, they're basically one of the best players in the game. <laughs> plus agility, accurate, nerves of steel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, looking at this, speak while we're on the subject of stabs, I think Vreed's been a little bit unlucky with some of his um, level up rolls. 
Um, of course, the only stat up he's actually managed to get is plus movement on one of his catches, which makes it, you know, like movement That's nine. Right. I mean, he hasn't it managed to get any catch. plus agi or any plus oh. strength anywhere else in this team so far. And he still has a few catchers that, well, like two catchers that don't have block on them yet. So Bludge, yeah. you know, they may be prime targets for anyone playing against them. Ups. Yeah. Like, um, Mighty Blow on that Frenzy Blitzer would be pretty good. Yeah. Guard um, on the sidestep one. Uh, so I'm just going to have a look at that game, the stats that like you played against uh, Walkathon's team. Um, so, he only broke armor four times over the whole thing, whereas the Astrox broke armor a whopping 15 times. Um, Pied Phoenix succeeded in 27 blocks, Astrox succeeded in 47. Um, if we look at like KOs inflicted, uh, Pied Phoenix inflicted two KOs with his four armor breaks. Whereas the Astrox inflicted three KOs and three injuries. Um, it looks like that was it though. So the other two must have just been stuns. There was like no other removals or anything. Um, yeah, it looks like um, Bad Phoenix did the classic high off kind of thing. He did a pass to get his touchdown and then he just stalled the uh, <laughs> orcs out. Stopped them from scoring. Yeah. Like I haven't watched the match, but just looking at the stats, that would be my guess. Like, the Orcs only got 30 yards running, so they obviously weren't able to move much. I don't know if, like, you know, 15 armor breaks and only 3 kills and 3 injuries, you know. I think, mm. you know, that might have been quite lucky on his part not to see any, um, you know. Yeah, but that, that's a lot of armor breaks against the mostly heavy 8 team. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, you know, you're breaking armor 15 times and six out of that, you're, you know, sending players onto the side of the, you know, onto the side of the pitch. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't complain with those stats, really. Yeah. You're an elf coach, though, like, you know, with your agility for you've always, you know, even if you have guys removed, you know, you've always got the opportunity to, you know, dodge out and run around and, you know, try and make plays. Which is... Yeah, yeah. definitely. It's why it's why I enjoy playing, you know, agility four teams rather than playing something that's just orientated more towards bashing. It's the gentleman's pursuit, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, here's hoping that you know in your next few level ups, um, breathe, you manage to roll some um, plus stats, make this team look a little bit more scary with the steroids, and you know, let's hope that you push on and get a few more wins. I think it's really cool that you've managed to pick up your first win of the season. Yeah, we want to see you know as many, um, you know, make the leagues as close and as interesting as possible. Um, Div one, of course, has got thirteen weeks overall, so you know it's the most developed. It's the longest out of the three kind of you know big O divisions. So I think we're all going to be you know looking eagerly onwards as our divisions start coming to an end towards you know some entertainment from Div 1. Of course uh, looking at the leaderboard there's three playoff spots available at the end of the year in this one and so far we have um, White Line, Reese's Ravens and Shadow Hill Cowboys occupying the top three spots. Um, I don't think Sanjun's played this week yet. No he hasn't. Who's he due to play? Uh, the Capital uh, Rats. Gavin. Link. Yeah, Lynx Any predictions good, there? I think Shadow Hill will take it. Like, Lynx is a good coach, but I just have to give it to um, Sanjun and his Dark Elves. I think the TV difference is, you know, it's, I mean, it's only like 270, but like, if you have a look at just like the amount of rats that, you know, Lynx has got, he's got like 15 players. Yeah. He's got like four extras, yeah. so that's what, you know. He's all... getting a bit of bloat there from his extra players. Exactly. Mm. He's going to have to hope for a few, um, you know, the removals to go his way because he does have a piling on mighty blow tackle um, Storm Vermin. And he does I have imagine... that triple Rog gutter runner, so. 
I, I imagine you're hoping that Lynx uh, pulls out the victory there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'd, I'd still give shit the Shadow Hill Cowboys the edge, but I wouldn't say that Lynx is uh, it's a, like there's no way he's going to win. He's got you know a reasonably good team for for doing it with a wizard. If he gets you know the right opportunity with that um, Peter Costello, um, he could easily pick up a couple of touchdowns and very quickly. Yep. He's going to have to play well, but it could happen. But, yeah, anyhow, um, I think that's our roundup of, you know, we talked about some of the teams, we've talked about the divisions, like we're just about done. And do you guys want to point out anything else that's happened? You know, maybe has anything interesting happened over the week that you want to talk about? Or uh, I did get a strength five player. Oh, yes. Uh, but, okay, let's yeah. have a look at that. <laughs> <laughs> This is, this I was is... so happy when you. I was so happy when you asked that question in Discord. You're like, "Do I take strength five? I'm like, "Hell yeah!" I think everyone that was watching was like, "Yes, strength five right now." Um, it so would yeah. have been spitting in the face enough or not to take it, really. So yeah, everyone. Yeah, exactly right. This is who you're going to be putting all your bounties on from now on. Um, we Arthur have... Pen Dragon. Yeah, I've just got him up on my screen just now. Um... <laughs> Yeah. Still, no one has him in the fantasy league. He's got a touchdown every <laughs> single game. <laughs> it doesn't seem right, does it? I haven't really been paying attention to the fantasy league. Like, is that quite popular? That's or... all I've been paying attention to. As if anyone has picked up Arthur. <laughs> all right. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's the only part you care about. Is there some easy way to see how your players are doing in the fantasy league? Like, is it on? Is like there a website or something? It's a or... spreadsheet. Yeah, there's a Google spreadsheet that uh, Herring Zord maintains. All right, I'll need to have a look at that. It, it takes it takes a little bit of um. Oh no, actually they've put it right there on the um, the quick links on on the Discord. Sorry, Discord. Yeah. The Reddit sub, the subreddit. Man, he he posts it in out. his roundup every week. Like he has a little overview of it there. Ah, right, okay. Do a lot of coaches play the fantasy league, or? I think it's fifteen or seven. Them. Oh, yeah. wow. More than I thought. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. But yeah, definitely, like, I think we can expect more to come from Arthur Pendragon, right? With his, you know, strength five. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I gotta be careful with him, because if I expose him out there, people are gonna kick the crap out of him, but um, he's probably gonna be consist- fairly consistently making touchdowns as my ball carrier. There you go, the, the I really guys. need to to try and get some some more SPP onto the uh, the blockers and blitzers though, um, just because I need some more tackle, especially before I play Morka in two weeks. So, anyone watching, all your bounties or your fantasy picks, you know, Arthur Pendragon's there. Apparently, he's going to be scoring a lot more. Uh, uh, if you're there. luck, that means all your uh, Pornhub subscriptions. <laughs> 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 I, I actually think he's been told that he can't he can't put those up for bounty anymore. Um, oh, has he? There a bit. I, I think so. Not, I, not I, friendly, I, friendly, I suppose it's a yeah, little risky. I think those some fifteen-year-old kid wins it. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be yeah, happy, but his parents probably wouldn't. It's, uh, there was a. Um, Do you ever see that? It was on the Comedy Channel on a uh, Foxtel. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, the Man Show. And they had a little skit there, and the guy, the wife's told the husband, you know, she's found her son, you know, you know, the girly mags. And he sort of goes into his son's room and sits down with his son and goes, you know, these are for adults, gives him a hug, and in his, uh, in his mind, he's just like, just, yes, not gay. So. <laughs> Isn't one of those guys running one of the late shows now? Which is just, uh, I think so, a- yeah. Yeah. Anyway, before we get too far off topic, um, I think that's everything <laughs> from our recap this week. Um, have you guys got any shout outs or anything you put on you want to say to anyone that's watching? Nope. No, um, okay. yeah, I, you know, Crusaders Playbook is on YouTube. Uh, I think the last couple of games that I've played should be up now. 
I'm not sure. I don't remember if I queued them up correctly or not. Um, but yeah, they'll be floating around, I think. If yeah. not, I'll uh, get onto that. <laughs> and you've got your um, stream sorted out a lot better now. It's a lot more stable. So if anyone um, is watching and wants to watch some of Crusaders games, yeah. I know I was having problems watching it before, and it's now you know a lot easier for me to watch. So, yeah, yeah it turns right. out it was just a network adapter issue that I had to sort out. But, um, that seems to be fixed now. So, I haven't heard anyone complaining about buffering. Let's put it that way. Oh, good. So, yep, yeah, that's all being sorted out. So you can see Crusado on the YouTube's for his games. Um, yeah, or um, or on Twitch. Uh, I've been. Streaming on there the last couple of times, a couple of people had requested some more Twitch content. So there's always that option. I'll probably bounce between whichever one has the most popularity, I guess. Oh, magic. Okay, mm. so I just wanted to say, you know, thank you to Crusader. Thank you to Reese for joining us for the recap this week. Um, for oh, thanks the- for having us. Yeah. For the YouTube guys, um, thanks for watching. Um, if you like the recap, please leave a like, dislike, dislike, any comments or you know any kind of news, anything we've missed, anything you want to shout out at all, leave them in the comment box below. And please subscribe for more info and matches and recaps from Rebels Big O League. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs>